Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum, where you join me on top of our Schmez, on our Schmercedes scooter, having some fun. <laughs> really, Tom? Yes, really. Anyway, moving on from that, back to the more serious stuff. Today, well, it's going to be really exciting because this week we're starting the transformation of the Aston Martin DBS in Midnight Blue down at Godleman's and getting that paintwork the way it always should have been from factory. That's right. So obviously, as you said, the car's been dropped off. We've had a... Not here anymore. Yeah, the car, yep, it's not here. We found out some of the issues, obviously, that need to be sorted with the car. And we're going to start the full process of painting up those bits. So yes. bumpers will be off, they'll be sanded, prepped, anything needs to be sorted, addressed. I'm actually looking forward to the final result, but I'm not looking forward to seeing the process of or watching the DBS be attacked with a sander and other various tools that are gonna be quite cringeworthy in the, you know, in the thought of it. I kind of am, I don't know why. But then obviously we get to see <laughs> the paint being laid down and then the finished product, which should be yes. a nice sparkly midnight blue DBS. Yes, without all of the lacquer issues and the oxidization and anything else that's been going on without any masking lines, that is gonna be absolutely perfect the way it should be. Now, we've had a call from John saying that we need to get over there because he started to strip the car, I believe, already. Yes. So we should be able to turn up fairly soon and there will be pieces of car on the floor. Yeah, and hopefully we get to see the last of it coming apart or going well. So I guess in order to do so, we need to jump in the car. Now, the RS3 is sat outside. Yeah, that obviously is always an option. Um, However, Tim has actually been dailying something before he went away and it's still parked I know exactly next to thinking. the M3. You think we'll and, take the roadster for a run? Well, I might have stolen the key and actually been using it for daily duties myself. So I think we just jump back in the roadster. Okay, cool. So let's head over, get a cold start and get over to Godelman's. Yes, let's go. We're out on the road in the GTO Roadster and we're actually being quite boring because we've got the roof up. We have. Well, we've actually been speaking to Tim quite a lot today. And clearly that's been enough alone to bring the bad weather back because we've had some clouds had a little bit of rain. The roads are mostly dry now, but there's still a couple of damp patches here and there. So yeah, roof down and more crucially taking it easy on, on the Cup 2s. But we are making good progress. Yeah, not long to go until we arrive at Godleman's and then we can uh, go and get our first update on the DBS. And as much as we do need to take it a bit easy with the Cup 2s, we can still have some fun and get that V8 up going. We are just now arriving back at Godlemers. It feels like we've done this drive way too often, but we have a DBS to go and get an update on. We do, and in theory, should have a couple of pieces missing. Yeah. Right, I guess we jump straight inside and find the DBS. Yes, let's go and see where it is. We're now inside with the DBS here at Godlemers, and as you can see, they've got the wheel off and on the ramp, ready for them to start prepping it. Is that it? No, it's not. They actually don't mess around here. Now, it's still quite early in the day, yet already, if we come round the front, you'll see the guys, well, they've got the front wheels off as well. So just the front wheels and just the wheel arches and the rear wheels? No, because if you have a look down on the floor here, you'll see we've got both headlights, uh, the bum uh, bumper, yes, bumper, <laughs> air boxes, grill, number plate, got the engine cover here, got the side strikes there, because all of this needed to come off in order for this job to be done. Properly. And now the car looks like this, which is a really cool sight actually seeing sort of all the underpinnings and everything underneath a DBS that you don't normally see. No, it, it almost feels like we're back up at McGurk with the V8 Vantage when that thing was in pieces. Not quite as many pieces here, but yeah, it's really cool to be able to get in and see everything inside and just see how packed in these things are. But yeah, it, it's quite shocking. It's probably a good job Tim isn't here. I don't think he'd want to see his brand new DBS or stripped quite like this. But no. This is what needed to be done because I mean, I don't think the camera will pick it up, but here we've got a really rough edge from where the previous paint job, the headlights weren't removed and therefore the prep wasn't sufficient. Same here on these. I don't know if that comes across on camera there. That's a really horrible edge on the lacquer there. And, you know, in removing all of these bits and pieces, it enables the prep to be done correctly. This can now be rubbed down, get all of that out of the way which I think will be one of the next processes after the rear end's been taken apart, is to get all of this rubbed down, get it prepped, and then get it in the paint booth. And one thing that John pointed out to me was that on Aston Martin Paintworks, you can see here this sort of mirror-like finish. There is no 
uh, orange peel. And then when you come around here, you can see how sort of orange peely that goes. So yeah, the yeah. difference between that and that is is crazy. And this is where you can see this is obviously the original paintwork from factory, and this one, this one isn't. So I'm sure these guys here will be able to match the factory orange peel and get this looking just as it would have done all of those years ago. So I think we'll head back towards this museum now and get a few bits done there before we come back here and get another update. We've uh, <laughs> we've become a little bit brave. Yeah, we're trying to avoid traffic, so we're now on single track, country roads. And we've also taken the roof down. Yes. That was Paul Brad's idea. When one of us has an abarth and constantly drives it with the roof down, this is what we end up with. Yeah, but, but luckily, we've Tim's got the, the uh, Yeah, Tim's got the, the new heated bucket seats, the Recaro pole position, so we can have heated seats while we're cruising roof down, which is great. Yeah, and as much as this probably would be quite a nice road to give it some beans down, probably not the most appropriate. No. So we're just cruising for now, back towards this museum. Hopefully we'll be there soon. As you know, we have become quite addicted to playing football in the barn and there's a few football print marks on the dust of some of the cars. I think even here, there was a mark which has now turned into the sun and a cloud. I don't know who drew that. Tom, do you know anything about this? Oh look, the LT bumpers over there. I'm gonna take that as, a, you probably do, but I think we're gonna blame Tim. Tim drew that. Tim, that was definitely Tim. Definitely was Tim. Anyway, I just had a phone call from John down at Godleman's and in about the next 15, 20 minutes or so, he's gonna start unbolting the rear bumper just to see what's up with the alignment on that. So he said, if you wanna see it come off, we probably need to leave now to get there in time to do that. So I think we should go down there and well, see that come off. So Roadster's there, conveniently. Ready to go. Left it parked just here in the entrance, just because, well, why not? And again, just to point out, because I know it's been in the comments a little bit, but the roads are a little bit damp out, as you would have seen earlier on in our journey. And as soon as you come off the carpet, bone dry. Yeah. Nothing comes off. So these are doing a great job. Although, however, clearly, uh, they're doing too good a job and we probably need to hoover the, sorry. Hoover them. I, I probably need like to that. hoover these off just to, just to ensure that that doesn't then continue in there. But anyway, without further ado, I'll open your door for you. Let's go. Thanks, mate. Jump ahead a bit. We're back with the DBS, and John from Godleman's is just taking the very last screw out of the rear bumper right now. So, in a few moments' time, is that one done? Yep, we're ready. So that's now ready to come off. So I think I'm going to have to grab this side of it. Brad, you should probably take over the commentary because this might go wrong. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> right, so supposedly it's come straight back. And then there's a few sensors, I believe, just for the there parking are. sensors. There we go, cables to be removed. And then we're gonna pop it onto this trestle table here. You're doing well, Tom, you're doing well. I've not broken it yet. Yeah, just don't let go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm trying not to. How much is a DBS rear bumper? I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Fortunately, if I did drop it, John could repair it for us. Here we go. Almost there, is that the last one? Right. Fingers crossed, that should be it. And almost there. I think one's being a bit fiddly. There we go. Look at that. Rear bumper with obviously the exhaust tips mounted onto it and all the carbon. There we go. Great success. Yes, now I guess we can finally have a look and see if there's any obvious reason as to why that wasn't quite lining up properly. And well, there's nothing obvious to me. No, so it could be maybe it was just pulled in a bit too tight or something along those lines, but. Maybe, I think this is where obviously the expert John will come in, have a look for himself and see, or see what he can see and we'll report back to you guys shortly. Yeah, but that's a little bit bubbly there. A little bit of oxidization there which is gonna get repaired. So yeah. It's quite cool seeing this whole rear off now. It is. It's not how you normally see one of these. No, not at all. Good morning and welcome back to Godlemans. It's the next day and I've come for an update. And as you can probably see, the DVS has had a bit of a transformation and it's not looking quite as glossy on some of the main panels. So to run you through what we've had done so far, obviously this is still the midnight blue paintwork that has been sanded down to remove the gloss. Here we have 2K primer, which has been put over some light body filler just to fill in some of the stone chips or some of the damage that we found on parts of these wings. The front bumper is fully 2K primed and we've just started sanding down a little bit here um, 
to help smoothen it obviously before it goes in for the base layer and lacquer etc same thing with the driver's side 2k primer over some light body filler and obviously we've got the rest of the paint and coming around to the rear this is a aluminium body panel so we have 1k primer um, which is over some rush protection obviously the oxidizer oxidize nope the oxidation was here so that has been rust treated and then it's got a 1k primer with a 2k primer over top obviously this still needs to be sanded back down um, before it has a base layer and then that whole panel will be lacquered so lots of exciting progress it's kind of interesting seeing the car looking like this with everything off and being primered and sanded down and essentially a matte satin midnight blue rather than the gloss that we've been used to but let me find John and we will sand a few more bits down and obviously then we'll try and take you guys along for as much of this process as we can so getting in the paint booth and seeing it transform back into the metallic midnight blue right time for some sanding John do you want to run me through exactly what this process is yep so we're just rubbing down 2k primer with a 500 disc um, we've got to get that to a really nice level and then we're going to go over it with a 800 disc um, and then progress to a thousand disc to just get it get every little bit of any imperfections out any scratches or anything like that so this is just to tidy it up and make sure it's nice and smooth before it gets any base layer and uh, and then obviously the lacquer over top yeah absolutely we're just getting rid of the majority of the primer there that's covering up cool some good progress so far so i think I'm probably going to head back over to this museum and obviously we'll come and catch up with you in a day or two when we start with the base layer and the lacquer. Perfect. A few days have gone by and I'm back out on the road in my Bath 124 with the roof down because as you can probably see, the weather we have right now is glorious. Getting the roof down in this car at any point is such a special occasion so it's lovely to have it back down. However, the main reason I'm out is we have another update to go and film on the Aston Martin DBS at Godlemans, which is about to have its paint. So I need to get over there, film a few bits before it gets painted, and then we'll take you guys along for the process of painting, well, as much as we can, because obviously don't want to go in the booth while it's being done. But yeah, let's get back on the road, get over to Godlemans, and see the DBS being painted back into midnight blue. Welcome to the paint booth down at Godlemans, and as you can see, the DBS is all masked up in its primer for the sections that have been repaired obviously same thing with the bumper full primer been sanded down this is lovely and smooth i'm not going to touch it i know it needs to have one more layer of panel wipe just to clear off any contaminants i think john touched it just to, to show me how smooth it was just now so um, that will have another layer of panel wipe but as you can see this is looking quite cool actually so it's been fully masked up again the, the tape that was on there and the sort of i think polythene sheets that were on there while it was parked up outside they have now come off and this has been all done all over again. So obviously we have rear quarter panel with a bit of filler and obviously primer here. That's been allowed a few days just to set and make sure it is cured, ready for, um, for full paint. And then obviously coming around the front, we've got front wing, same thing. Obviously all the gray bits are the primer and we have the passenger side front wing all ready to go. And obviously the front bumper. So it's really cool to see these like this. Um, I'm planning on sticking a GoPro up here, so hopefully we can get some kind of time lapse for you or something. Um, probably can't put music over, so I guess I'll have to voice over it at some point. We'll, uh, we'll figure that out later. But for now, I should probably come out of here because I don't want to be standing here while it's being painted because either I'm getting covered in midnight blue or I'm gonna uh, contaminate the paint. So yeah, I better come out of here. We'll let the painter at Godlemans come in and then he can make a start. And once he started, I'll sort of run you through the process um, that John has told me of exactly what's going to happen to it. So yeah, I think we fast forward and in a few seconds, this will be beginning to be painted. And the process begins, see if we can get a bit of zoom in. See if we can, are we gonna focus? No, we're not focusing. Process begins, time to lay down a base layer of midnight blue. See if we can catch it on this front edge. There we go, hiding that primer. Really cool process to see and we'll keep Sort of catching up throughout the whole thing. Come around to this side now as well. This should be a nice easy bit to film onto the front bumper so it just gets wiped down and blasted with some air first just to remove any contaminants on it and then obviously we lay down the layer of paint. You can see how intricate it is just making sure you get all of these lines on the edges not missing any section and then obviously it will be the the main layer over the top too. And this is the first I believe of three base layer coat so it'll be two more after this 
and then it will have two layers of lacquer. There we go. So this process now is a water-based paint dryer. So the paint is a water-based paint, so it's just to help it dry a little bit quicker. So you can see how quickly the uh, panel there has dried. That's sort of gone back to its satin matte form. And obviously when you look at the bumper at the front, that is still glossy and wet. So we'll continue with this process just to help that paint dry. And then we'll be on to the next layer of base coat. Base coat number two going down. You can see the front wing has been done. It's back to a glossy wet stage. And then same process with the front, obviously going over the sort of top and bottom edge first and on the corners just to make sure that's perfect. And then it's the full over the front face of the bumper. There we go, you can see it's now going more wet. Um, yeah, I'm glad it's not me doing it, I can tell you that. Uh, but hopefully when we do the C63 over the next months, we can get Tim involved and uh, let him lay down some sort of paint. The car's had its final coat of midnight blue and it's now having the first layer of lacquer and I think they call it a drop coat, which is just to help the metallic stand up. But you can see now we really start to get the gloss on the paint is looking so, so good. Really excited to see this in a few days finished and, and all back together. So yeah, let's get this coat done and then we will crack on with the final one. This is looking really good. There, you can see the reflection as well. Lovely stuff. Here we go then, final coat of lacquer going onto that rear quarter. You can see how metallic that's now got. Hopefully the focus stays. Yeah, looking really, really good. And obviously then we'll come down to the front here. It's just such a crazy transformation, seeing it go from with a bit of oxidation at the back and obviously seeing some of the imperfections and the sort of dodgy paint up the front to now seeing it go into this almost perfect level. Yeah, this is really, really cool to see. And hopefully Tim is a uh, very happy with the result. Obviously he's not here to see any of this. Um, we will end up sending him some photos and videos of the process that we've managed to film and obviously of the finished car. Um, but I guess when he's back from the Weishmi Euro Tour, that's when he'll see exactly what's been going on with it. But yeah, really cool process. As I said, glad it's not me doing it. Um, I'd rather the professionals do their, give their hand to it. So it, um, we get a nice finish, but yeah, looking really good. And that color is so, so nice. Obviously, rare color, I think one of six on the DBS is midnight blue, but looking really, really smart. One last look at the car then. Look how this is looking glass-like almost. It is looking really, really good. Obviously, any small imperfections will be tidied up over the coming days, and we will come back in a few days, which obviously will be pretty much the next clip, to see the car finished, put back together, polished, and then we can figure out how we're getting it back over to this museum. So for now, I'm gonna head off and we will let Godelman crack on with this car over the coming days. We are out on the road and heading over to Godelman to double check everything that's going on with the DBS. But can you guess what car we're in from this? You should be able to, hopefully. I'm joined by Tom and we're in. I know what car we're in. We're in the C63 AMG Black Series, of course, because because I've been unhappy, it's just how happy this thing made me. It's brilliant. I'll get to work with a really smiley Tom today. But anyway, um, we're gonna keep enjoying the V8. And keep up without the Tom. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, we're gonna keep enjoying the V8 and we will catch up with you when we find the DBS. We've arrived at Godlemans. The DBS is just being fitted back up. The rear bumper is now on the car. Let's just come around to the front as well. With this front wing on the passenger side, it's been flatted and it's looking a bit strange, I mean, one of the last clips you would have seen, obviously, was it nice and midnight blue, gloss, metallic, it was looking lovely, and now we're down to this. And Tom, this is your first time seeing the car in a few days. It is, it is. Obviously, you've been giving the guys the updates while I've been sorting bits out elsewhere, and this isn't ideally the state you want to see something in, but ultimately, this is part of the process, this is what's required. And this is obviously clearly what wasn't done 
properly previously. Exactly. And that's why we had the problems we did. So it's lovely to see it down here, right, Godman? It's being done as it should be done. And yeah, knowing that what's underneath all of this flatted lacquer, once it's polished up, is going to be the glorious midnight blue paintwork as it should have always been. Exactly. We'll go around the other side because that side hasn't had um, any sort of flatting done yet. So you can get a, a fairly good idea of how it's going to come out. It's obviously still got some orange peel. It's still got a few little sort of particles in there, but they again all get flatted out and then polished it, up. But. It does, but do you know what? I, d I don't think the camera will pick this up, but the orange peel that's there actually doesn't look as bad as it does on some cars out the factory. This is a really good level of orange peel considering it's straight out the gun. I think the guys have done a very, very good job here. And as you said, with a bit of polishing, this is going to be lovely. Yeah, it's looking really, really nice. It is, and it's, it's nice to see it. Yeah, again, after a couple of days, and I just can't wait to see it back together. And... Well, then we've got the decision to make because it's not a huge distance from here back to this museum but it is a distance. And then I've got the problem internally of, do I jump in it and drive it back? Which of course I'd love to do. Or do we phone someone like Tony from Turbo Transport to transport it back to ensure that there's no potential damage to that front end? Because it is a short distance, so the temptation is to drive it back, but something could happen to this lovely paintwork on the way. So that's to be worked out, I think. Also, before we go and grab lunch, we have the front bumper here. Almost forgot about this, but that is looking so, so nice again. Still needs all of the stages of preparation after so flatting and polishing, but that is looking so, so good. We're on our way to collect the DBS finally, and we decided that we wouldn't drive it, Tom, and we called on Mr. Tony Turbo Transport. We did. We made the decision that it's just not, let me put the window up, it's just not worth the risk of the brand new paintwork it only takes one stone chip and all of that hard work done by Godlemans is, is wasted, it's ruined. So, yes, we've called on Mr. Turbo, who is here with us, and uh, we're going to get it. Yeah, we thought we'd take the truck out rather than taking cars and the truck and whatever else. We've all come in this. Yeah, we've, I, yeah I've decided that once again, I enjoyed um, being driven around a little bit lately, so I've decided to do the same again. Not drive, Tony driving. Thanks, Tony. You're uh, welcome, you're welcome. Yeah. Right, let's go find the DBS. We've arrived back down at Godlemans and the DBS is looking fantastic. Really, really nice. We've obviously just had a quick walk around here with John, just going over everything that's been done, um, double checking that we are happy with everything and we are, it's looking really, really nice. I think we'll show you a little bit more in depth of what's been done and um, all of that sort of things when we get back to the barn. But for now, we need to get this. Tom, you've got the key. I do. Tony is currently unloading the trailer. So I guess you jump it's in. Time. We'll have a cold start. Why not? Yeah, maybe. I Should don't know how long it's been sat here, but yeah. We'll have Let's some have kind of start. start. We'll have a start, and then we'll get it in the trailer. There we go. Mirrors folded in, and this will go all the way up into the turbo mobile. That's what we're calling it now. Nicely done. And we have arrived back at the Schmuseum with the DBS. There we go. Back into, I guess, the lighting that we're used to. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's looking nice. See all that metallic coming through on the bits that have been painted. Um, See how, like, the purpley, or the purpleness of the blue coming through. I love it. What a lovely colour. That looks good. Thanks, Tony. We've yeah. now got all three Astons back in the room. We do, where are they? Oh yeah, GT is there. there. That's there, that's here. Yeah, I need to reorganise these. I just dumped the ropes to there the other day. Yeah, this looks really, really nice. Wow. So, to run you through what's been done. Front wings, both sides have been done. Front bumper has been done. The bonnet has just been polished up just to um, tidy up a few imperfections on that. Um, coming around this side. The whole car's also had a polish just to um, perfect the paintwork. Here we have the rear quarter that has had paintwork done and obviously that was to remove the oxidation we had on this part. Here overall looking really really good. In a few weeks time we'll get it down to Topaz for some PPF. It's so wonderful to have the DBS back here inside this museum looking lovely as it always should. And I think the biggest change for me is just down here on this number plate and that drill hole delete there that they've done. Let me just 
just looks so much better, which is actually quite funny considering you'll never actually see that as soon as the plate's on. But yeah, lovely to get this back here. Now I think it's gonna be my job to start organizing some of these and putting things back where they belong, parking everything up nice and neat again. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this transformation of the DBS, hopefully the first of many things to come with this car. And um, yeah, until next time.